In the UK, there are hundreds of rapid response medical teams on standby. And they have to get to the scene of an emergency in minutes. Minutes? <laughs> We're on call with the UK Emergency Services, showing you what it's really like on the front line saving lives. On call with me is paramedic Jan Van. Today I'm with the West Midlands Ambulance Service and I'm in this special fast response vehicle to get you to the scene of an emergency first. <coughs> Chris, wrong vehicle. Yes, this, this vehicle. This is the one we're using, this one, like I said. Jan alone can do 10 to 15 emergency call-outs in a day and a new case is just in for a 76-year-old lady with a dislocated hip. We're almost there. It's amazing how quick Jan and the fast response vehicle are. Jan and I are quickly on the scene. Hello. Just went to move, move the cushion, and it went. So poor old Geraldine had a hip replacement, so a new hip put in just a couple of months ago. But it's already been dislocated once, and it looks like it may have gone again. Pain? Want to touch? A little bit. A little bit. So when it dislocates, that means that the top of the thigh bone comes out of the socket on the pelvis. The muscles are so strong in the leg that it's impossible to put it back in place without putting her under anaesthetic. So she is going to have to go back in and have a very small operation. And in the meantime, Jan can assess her and make sure there's no damage to any of the nerves or blood vessels and totally reassure her, make sure she's safe before she goes into hospital. Hello there, come on in. In no time at all, the ambulance has arrived to take Geraldine to hospital. We've got to do it all without causing her too much pain. So that's why we've got this chair. It's been phenomenally tough, but this is not going to be comfortable. And after some careful manoeuvring... I've got you, I've got you. Geraldine is on her way. So a hip dislocation is just a phenomenally painful thing, but the amazing skill of Jan and the other paramedics is to get her onto that chair and into the ambulance without really increasing the pain. And then she can get to hospital and have the problem fixed. We're on call with the UK Emergency Services, showing you what it's really like on the front line saving lives. The West Midlands Ambulance Service is on standby all day, every day, to respond to emergencies. I'm hitching a ride in this rapid response vehicle so you get to see up close what it's like to be first on the scene. On call with me is paramedic Jan Van. She can do 20 emergency call-outs in a day. And a new case is just in. We've been called to see a 44-year-old lady, and at the moment, the suspected diagnosis is a stroke, and that means that she's potentially got a blocked blood vessel in her brain. If you act quickly, you can get a much better result than if you wait, so we need to get there fast. Minutes later, we arrive at the address. Inside, Jotty is in shock. She's lost feeling down one side of her body and has no idea why. And suddenly it started going all numb. On the, on the left side of your face, OK. And then I started going down, 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 then my husband pulled me back up. So you just started slumping in the chair, did you? Yeah. I'm going to do a few checks on you. If it is something serious, like if it is a stroke, which obviously we're all concerned about, it can be managed and it can be treated. Okay. So Jotty has high blood pressure and she's got diabetes. And both of those things make having a stroke a little bit more likely. Can you feel me touching it? I feel that side. Can you not feel this side? Not much there. So what Jan's doing now is assessing how well Jotty's nerves in the brain are working. And all that will tell us whether or not there's a problem in her brain and how quickly she needs to get to hospital. This numbness in this side of the face is not normal. So I would like to get you checked over at the hospital just to make sure that it's not like the start of, of anything like a stroke. So one of the most difficult parts of Jan's job is like, not just making medical decisions, but also dealing with normal, people, trying to persuade people who are frightened of hospitals that maybe it's so a good I idea to like go to in and to explain to people what's wrong, and that's what she's sure. doing there. What I'll do is I'll arrange for the ambulance to come, but I'm going to stay with you the whole time, OK? 5157, just amber back up, please. Thank you, on the scene. By the time the ambulance crew arrive... Hiya! Jotty's mood has lifted, thanks largely to the expert care she's received from Jan. 
She even manages a little joke. Why, why do you think you're feeling better? Do you handsome men like you? <laughs> <laughs> is that what it is? Yeah. Oh, don't make Sorry. their heads any bigger than they already are. Are we going to the opticians? <laughs> <laughs> oh, there we go. Oh, there we go. So Jodie's now in the ambulance and she's about to go to hospital where she'll get the treatment that she needs. She's laughing and joking, she's much more relaxed. It's a really good result for the emergency services. We're on call with the UK Emergency Services, showing you what it's really like on the front line saving lives. This is a rapid response car. It's one of a fleet of vehicles that respond to up to 3,000 emergencies a day here in the West Midlands. Time to find out what it's like to be first at the scene of a medical emergency. On call with me is paramedic Jan Van. She can do 20 emergency call-outs in a day. And a new case has come in. So we've been called to see someone with diabetes. We don't know exactly what the problem is yet. Their sugar could be high, it could be low, there could be something else going on. But what we know is we need to get there quickly. Moments later, we arrive at the house. Hiya. Inside, the man, Tony, is having some problems with a medical condition called diabetes. That means his body doesn't produce a chemical called insulin and his blood sugar levels get out of control. Uh, I've woke up this morning, I've got a blood sugar of 20. OK. Um, checked it an hour later, it's still at 17. OK. Doing another 10 units, each arm, and it's dropped down to 1.4. OK. Now, so Tony's very sensibly called the paramedics because his blood sugar is too low. The problem is, earlier in the day, it was too high, and he took insulin to bring it down, and he's taken too much insulin, and he can't get it back up again because the insulin's still in the system and working. Once your heart and your blood pressure and that have been checked out and they're fine, I can pop a little drip in your arm and give you yeah. some yeah. give you some glucose fluids. Tony's heart and blood pressure look fine. I feel actually a lot better than I did when you came through the door. Yeah. So Jan can now help boost his blood sugar levels by giving him a sugar called glucose. He's not able to eat at the moment and he's vomiting when he does eat, so he can't maintain sugar levels by himself. So that's going to raise his sugars up hopefully enough that he can cope at home. If it drops again, then they'll have to go to hospital. 8.7. Get some food down, yeah. yeah. As Tony's blood sugar levels return to normal, he can hold down food and start to manage his diabetes on his own again. When it's really severe, like it's been today, then you need a little bit of external help. So when we arrived, Tony's blood sugar was dangerously low. Now he's much more relaxed and, crucially, he's safe and he hasn't had to go to hospital. And that's all thanks to the emergency services. With hundreds of rapid response crews in the UK, if you have an accident, an emergency service like this won't be far away. Ouch. We're on call with the West Midlands Ambulance Service, showing you what it's really like on the front line saving lives. On call with me is paramedic Jan Van. Jan alone can do 10 to 15 emergency call-outs in a day, and a new case is just in. We've just received a call about a 75-year-old man who's fallen over and hurt his shoulder. So, of course, we need to assess that shoulder injury. We also need to work out why did he fall. I've got my ouch can here. Eric in the back has his big camera. And we're going to get you right up so you can find out what it's like to be first on scene. We quickly arrive and head inside to see Gerard, who's with his family. My name's Jan. What's happened? You fell out of bed this morning. OK. He was only let out of hospital yesterday. OK. You've landed on your shoulder. Yeah. Can I have a quick feel? Is that OK? OK. No so... pain when I'm pressing down your back? No. No. So your neck and your back are fine. Can you bring your head and look over your shoulder for me? So Gerard's just come out of hospital, so he really doesn't want to go back in. One of the main valuable things that Jan can do here is assess Gerard, make sure that he's safe, and most importantly, she's checking his nerves, and his bones and his muscles to make sure that they're all working well after that fall. Are you able to move that shoulder? Yeah. After Jan is happy that Gerard's shoulder's OK, she does some tests to try and find out what caused his fall. So Jan's doing Gerard's observations, and these are the really important numbers that tell us how sick or well someone is. Temperature, blood pressure and pulse. Oh, just double-check your blood pressure when you stood up, if that's OK. It's got a history in the past of postural hypotension. 
Um, postural hypertension is whenever you stand up, your blood pressure drops and it can cause you to pass out. So that drop in blood pressure can mean not enough blood gets to the brain and he faints. And you might have felt the same thing if you've been lying down very sleepily and then you stand up quickly, you can feel a bit dizzy. And in some older people, that can be more of a problem. So don't move, just stand where you are. That's good. Right then, sit down. How was that, Jan? That's good. It's gone up to 162.84. So that's all right. Yeah, so that's fine. Jan's happy that Gerard's postural hypotension is under control, so he won't need to be admitted to hospital. You can stay here and I can leave him in your capable hands. Mm -hmm. Well, Gerard, thank you very, very much. And I'm pleased, very pleased you get to stay out of hospital. Thank you. In a sense, one of the most valuable things that Jan can do is keep people out of hospital. Yes, a lot of the time, she fixes them up, ready for the ambulance to take them in and be properly treated. But actually, we've done an amazing thing here. She's just made Gerard feel better and he can stay at home and enjoy an evening with his family. We're on call with the UK Emergency Services, showing you what it's really like on the front line saving lives. On call with me is paramedic Jan Van. Today, I'm heading out to show you what it's like to be first at the scene of a medical emergency. Can I drive? No. Can I make the sirens work? No. Can I turn the lights on? No. What can I do? I can carry the bags. Yes, official bag carrier. Jan alone can do 10 to 15 emergency call-outs in a day, and a new case is just in. So we've been called to see a lady with what's called postpartum bleeding. She had a baby a week ago, and now she's bleeding. Now, that can be very dangerous, can actually be life-threatening. Jan and I rush to the scene and get inside as quickly as possible. Hello. We find the patient, Jade, in a lot of pain. Jan starts treating her while I go to the car to fetch some gas and air. Its medical name is Entonox. It's a mixture of nitrous oxide and oxygen. Sometimes people use it when they're giving birth, but it's a really good way of quickly getting someone who's in severe pain a little bit more comfortable. I'm quickly back in, and Jade is breathing in the soothing gas within seconds. <laughs> Take as much as you need. Slow, big breaths in. At the moment, it's all about bringing Jade's pain levels down to a tolerable level. So she's also given a strong painkiller directly into her vein. All right. See if that helps. So I want you comfortable before we move you. I'm not moving you off this sofa until you're pain free, all right? Jan is monitoring closely exactly how much pain Jade is in. And what pain score was you initially? If you're a five yeah. man, you're a ten initially. So I'd say it's about a three. So I can control it. Yeah. That's brilliant. When we arrived, she said our pain was ten out of ten. Now it's more like three out of ten. So it makes it much easier to get to the ambulance, get her to hospital, which is where she needs to be. Extra help is here. This lady is completely different to when I arrived. And yeah, this is Jade. And Jan's finally happy that Jade's pain is down to a level where she can be comfortably moved into the waiting ambulance. How are you feeling now, Jade? It's still there, but I can cope with it. Thanks, Jan. You've been a diamond. Not a problem. Thanks, guys. All the best, then, Jade. Right, thanks. You take care, darling. Cheers. Right. In a really short space of time, Jan managed to make a massive difference to the amount of pain that Jade was in. She was very anxious when we arrived, and Jan managed to calm her down. Very difficult thing to do with someone in that much pain. By the time she got in the ambulance, she was looking much better. Jade was treated at the hospital and went home the same day. 